Hi, this is going to be a tutorial about Newzella. Okay, Newzella is a great site. Uh, it involves nonfiction articles that are available for anyone. The site is free. Of course, uh, it is really excited to get you to start your pro trial. Okay, um, and I'm sure that it offers really awesome things because the site really does seem to want to help kids and, and anything that gets kids reading nonfiction and tries to um, afford them things that they may be interested in and things that will get them into reading nonfiction, I fully support. I think that's awesome. So look at, we've got um, a plethora of, of topics from a teen fighting back after being asked to take her, <laughs> retake her yearbook photo because of her bare shoulders, controversial, to um, robots, to pro athletes, so to Japan's deer population. I mean, we've got a little bit of everything. Dinosaurs. So there are, are many different things that should like grab all different um, types of students' attentions. Okay, we've got animals and look at their lightning thief. Okay, we've got our kids that are really attracted to science type of topics, history buffs. Okay, so a little bit of everything. So, and the list goes on. So, there we've taken a look quickly at the types of, of um, topics that really grab interests. Okay, so there are many things that we can do. Excuse me. We can go up here and we can search, of course. And now I want to keep everything in English, but we could search um, the titles that they suggest, or we could type in the topic of choice. We could cruise over here and we could um, select an, a grade level if we wanted to, or we could scroll down and select one of the reading standards that are here, okay? I personally have an account. I'm, I think you can use it without an account, but I have an account because if you do have an account, you can save articles. And um, I'd like to point something else out. If you noticed when we went by some of the articles, notice it said, oh, excuse me, assigned, and how many times things were assigned, okay? Because by having an account, you can assign things to students. Okay, so um, once let's say I found an article and let's say I want to get kids talking about this, see what they think about the whole bare shoulders thing. Okay, I teach middle school, so that might be a hot topic. Okay, so we come down here. Oh gosh, I haven't even signed in yet. So I thought I had, usually I automatically sign into everything. Okay, so we come down here and there is the actual article. Okay, so we can go up here. Oh, these are just to find more articles. If we wanted to find different things. If you wanted to print it out, if you wanted to go ahead, I'm assuming that would be to send it, like to share it. I don't know what that is. I'm going to click on it. My computer's terribly, terribly slow. Well, it's not responding. So I'm going to sign in because it's just not doing what it normally does. Mm-hmm, I could get pro. All right, so there we go. That looks a little different. Okay, still, I could assign to so-and-so. Okay, I've set up a few classes. Okay, but I may want to hide it from certain other classes. Maybe I don't feel that they're ready for it. Okay, so I've found an article and I'm ready to roll with it. OK, 
Okay, I definitely don't want it in Spanish. I would want it in English. Okay, I could save this article. Again, share, print. I could add to text set. Let's see what that's about. I've never done that before. Actually, I've only gone and checked things out and created classes. I think that's just where you like were to write a message to your students is what I'm assuming. Articles available in Spanish. Oh, so the kids can annotate possibly on the sides. Okay. But that's not what I wanted to get to. Okay, open to activities. Okay, yeah. So here's where they can annotate on the sides. They can just go ahead and click on write, and then they could use their mouse to take notes as they're reading. Okay, notice this one. Because I think I signed up this class as a seventh grade class, it automatically leveled it at seventh grade. But what I like about this is that you can go up here, the Lexile range, and let's say my students Lexile is where um, it's basically saying the difficulty level uh, is it's addressing the difficulty level of the article, of how it was written. And let's say my students are just not understanding some things. They can automatically go up here and make it easier. Now you might say, well, duh, they're going to make it the easiest they can. But I don't just assign something and leave my students to just go willy-nilly and, and fulfill assignments while I sit and file my fingernails during class, you know. Um, most most of the time we we work together and collaborate and I move from group to group so and we have a lot of discussion. So um, I'm pretty hands-on and I think I like this because I think that a lot of my kids would like to challenge themselves and I think they would like to go ahead and try to see if they could understand the more difficult, difficultly written articles. So I'm really interested to try this out. And I think they'll all probably try it at the easiest level at first. And they might want to reread it and try it at a more difficult level. And we'll probably practice it and notice how my grade level went from seventh to ninth grade. So I think that's kind of going to be a cool topic. Once they see that the easiest levels at third grade. My seventh graders, I don't think, are going to be real keen on reading at that level. So I'm kind of excited about that. Notice how there is a quiz that I can assign as well as the teacher. So um, anyway, that tells you a little bit about Newzella, and I hope that I love it as much as I already seem to enjoy it before I've started really using it fully with students, but I hope you enjoy it too. Thank you.